ask and they pray in any manner they feel comfortable. Position of prayer. Surely I am being turned to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thine servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. Please grant me protection against all my faults. For none grant protection against faults but thee, and guide me to the best of morals. For none can guide to the best of morals but thee, and turn away from me the evil and indecent morals. For none can turn away the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham successful, and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praiseworthy and magnified. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I bear witness there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. We thank Allah for his many servants and prophets that he have sent to the human family. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the Gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Almighty God, Allah. As a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I can never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Far Muhammad. We give him praise and thanks for raising one among us as a leader, teacher, and guide. That man is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We know him as the exalted Christ. And we give them thanks for one who is in our midst today, who is guiding and warning all of humanity, that champion for black people in all of humanity. That man is the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet you all in their names. In the greeting words of peace, Assalamu alaikum. And that means peace be unto you. How's everyone feeling? Oh, brothers and sisters, we are in for a treat today. Give yourselves a hand for coming out today. We thank you for coming. Today you are going to be hearing the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, taught to us by the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I just want to thank every one of us that are here, that is here for our first time guests, all of our visitors, those that are coming down from Los Angeles and Rialto or the Inland Empire. We thank you for coming today because we are going to, we have, we are in for a treat today with our sister, Sister Dr. Ava Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, you will not be disappointed today. Matter of fact, you're going to be hearing a word that is going to uplift us today. You're going to be hearing a word that is going where you're going to learn something today, where it's going to wake us up. And so, brothers and sisters, please listen to the words that are being said today because we are all going to learn something today, today and we are going to be fed the word of Almighty God, Allah. Brothers and sisters, before I bring up the next speaker, I just want to go over a few procedures that you encountered when you came inside. One of the first procedures was the search procedure. And this may be strange because you may go into your church, you may go into whatever house of worship you go into, and you don't have to be searched there. But I'm not sure if you've been watching the news. I'm not sure if you've been watching CNN. 
I don't know if you've been watching Fox News or you've been reading the newspaper, but there are those that will go inside of a church. There are those that will go inside of a mosque or a masjid. There are those that will go inside of a synagogue, a movie theater, a, a school, and shoot the school up. So we have the search procedure for everyone's safety today. And we don't want anything to happen. We don't want no weapons to be, uh, be in our meetings because you never know what will happen. So brothers and sisters, we thank you for submitting to the search procedure. Another thing that you encountered was the seating arrangements. And you see brothers on one side, sisters on another side. And we do this, one of the reasons is because of the law of attraction. And you know, if you're sitting next to an attractive uh, woman, brothers, or sisters, you're, you're sitting next to an attractive man, and that person is looking good and, and smelling good, and then, then, then sometimes the brothers, we get the, we get the flexing, you know what I mean? If we got the muscle t-shirts on, right? And the sisters, they start smiling. And then once you know, you're not paying attention to what the speaker is saying. We want you to really listen today. We really want you to have focus today. Because this word can save our very lives. This word can uplift us and get us, get us out of the predicament that we are in today as a people. And whatever you hear today, we pray that whatever you hear, you go out and you share with your brothers and sisters. Because in the nation of Islam and in Islam in general, we want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. We want for our sisters what we want for ourselves. So if we have a word and we heard a word today yes, that inspired us, that uplifted us, you will want the same for your family member. Is that right? Yes, you will want the same for your friend, your associate. You will want the same for your brother or sister. Is that right? Yes, you wouldn't want your brother or sister to look bad and you're looking good. You're not doing the brotherly thing. You're not doing the sisterly thing when you are leaving your brothers and sisters in the dumps. You're not doing the right thing if you're keeping them in a condition where the condition is low. You want your people to be uplifted today, is that right? We should want our brothers and sisters to be uplifted. So whatever you heard today, you go back to your family members, to your associates, to your friends, right? Go, go back into your neighborhood and share this word if this word inspires you. And brothers and sisters, I can bear witness that this word, something that you hear today, is going to inspire you today. And whatever you hear, I pray that it changes your very life. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to be bringing up the next speaker. And it is our sister who is in the ministry class. And she's a wonderful sister. And not only is she, is she in the ministry class, which is an important duty, right? Yes. But also, she's a nurse. And every time she sees me, she al she's always letting me know what's going on with our health. And I probably have a bag of hot Cheetos or something. I don't eat hot Cheetos no more. But I might have some fatty foods, right? Some unhealthy things. And my, you know, while I'm eating, and she'll, she'll be like, brother, you, you know, we shouldn't be eating that, right? Or I might have something else, some candy, because I'm, I'm a candy connoisseur. <laughs> but she'll let me know, brother, we, we shouldn't be eating that. So without any further delay, help me to bring up my sister that is in the ministry class with me, Sister Marcia X. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, in this brief time that I have, I would like to just share a few words on the topic of understanding and gratitude. I once uh, received a, a book from our beloved Minister Ava, and in that, in that, she wrote, may Allah bless you with the light of understanding. So I was like, wow, oh, what does that mean? So then in my studies, to understand something is to fully grasp the topic. So first of all, I want to say that I'm so thankful to be in this nation. I'm so thankful to be in MGT. These teachers have brought me, as well as all of us, life. Mm. And in that life, we have light. We have a shine about us. Because we are a divine people. We are Allah's people, and Allah has given to us a promise. And in this promise, he promised to take care of us, to always provide for us. So, so I would like to speak from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 where it states, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shone. And I thought about that. The light shine. Have we not have a light that shined upon us? Are we not living within the light when Master Far Muhammad came and he rose up the honorable Elijah Muhammad, that was the beginning of the light. Now we have the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is the continuing light. He is the sun. When you look at him, you see the light. You see the promise of Allah that he has to take care of us. It goes on to say in chapter 29, the same book, Isaiah, Verse 18, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Those of us that have been through the process, when we began this process and you began to read these teachings and you began to read the Quran, did you not hear something. You couldn't put your hand on it right away, but then you start to put things together and you start to see things. Those things that looked like nothing before became clear to you. Those things that you did not understand before became clear to you. You felt like a new person. You felt like something was growing within you because you were being blessed with the light of understanding. So, Allah promises to elevate us. We are not to stay where we are. Yes, we are a people that have been through a lot, but it's not where we are to stay. We are being elevated. We are being taught. We are being lifted with understanding of the time, of what is going on, why this is going on, why this is happening. When you turn on the news, and some people are really panicking out there because of what's going on, whether it be with the government, with finances, <coughs> with the weather. But where we are right now, if you understand the time and what is going on and why it is going on, then with that, that doesn't bother you. That doesn't apply to you. So the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan says, with understanding, it reduces stressful surprises. All this is going on is not a surprise. It has been said, it has been told, it has been prophesied to happen. <clears throat> so, sorry. 
Allah in the person of Master Bard Muhammad has given us, his divine people, all the tools that we need to live a life of love, joy, and happiness. But in order to attain the love, joy, and happiness, we must keep our duty to Allah. Because with all of us, there is a purpose. With all of us, there is something that we have to do. And this was given to us before we were even placed in the womb. Because all of us are here to fulfill the, the mission or the purpose that Allah has for us. And many places in the Quran, all over the Quran, it says, surely Allah loves those who keep their duty. And so, in my conclusion, the process of understanding reduces stressful surprises. Brother Jabril wrote, wrote in Closing the Gap, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught not the coming of God, but the presence of God. If God is present, then everything can be known. If God is present, then everything can now be explained. If God is present, then everything can now be understood. And as I said earlier, we are a divine people. God is present. He is present in us, around us. He is everywhere that we look. When I look at my brothers, when I look at my sisters, I see Allah. I see the essence of Allah. I see the presence of Allah. I feel Allah. That's right. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us Islam, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is the completion of God's favor, and it offers to us the greatest degree of freedom because it gives us the greatest knowledge of the offer of freedom and the greatest knowledge of our connection to him Allah that we now are made free to grow into him. This Islam that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gives us represents a new sun, a new moon, a new star, a greater freedom, a greater justice, and a greater equality. So as I leave this roster right now, I leave you all with the light of understanding. Thank you for listening. Let's give her another hand. All right, sisters and brothers, we are going to go ahead and uh, continue with our program today. The next person that I will be bringing up is our brother. He is the uh, head over um, the Ministry of Education. And we know, brothers and sisters, that education is very, very important. Education really plays a very important part because with education, you are teaching the future leaders. You're teaching the future doctors. You're teaching the future engineers and those that are builders. And when we look at the education system in America, the education system in America is falling. The education system is not sufficing the needs of black children, brown children, and even white children. It's not sufficing the needs of these great minds. So some of the children, they say that they get bored in school. And so they don't want to go into school no more. They're, they're not interested in education no more because the school system isn't really feeding their minds like it should be. So brothers and sisters, this brother is a head over the education system 
And if you look at the education system in the nation of Islam, the education system in the nation of Islam shows results and it is successful. Yes, because when you have those that are in the third grade that are learning things that high school students are learning right now in this education system, you have great minds in MUI where they graduate from MUI and they go into college and they dominate in college. Right. See, these are the minds that we are producing because in the education system of this world, they really, I don't know, they kind of tell us that we really not who we are, you know what I mean? Right. They, 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 you know, they kind of belittle us. Right. So brothers and sisters, without any further delay, help me to bring up my brother, Brother Charles Muhammad with a round of applause. I'm like Assalamu alaikum. Well, let me see. Oh, sir. Sir. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness there's no God but Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is forever due. I further bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the exalted Christ. And I bear witness the honorable Mr. Louis Farad their divine reminder in our midst. I greet you once again, good words of peace. Of Asalaamu As Alaikum. Alaikum sir. How's everyone feeling? Fine, fine sir. All praise is due to Allah. I too am feeling fine, striving to make my word my bond. Uh, I first want to thank Sula Minister Waliullah Muhammad for this opportunity to share just a few words. Um, and also, I want to thank the laboring staff, those who are committed to helping the believers to be Muslims and, and help them in their lives. You know, um, it's not a paid position, per se, and they spend a lot of hours yes, that's right. all the time, I mean, just praying and, and working on the behalf of the believers. Yes. So, you know, they, they just, we just can't thank them enough. So let's give a round of applause for the ladies. <laughs> and uh, being a former labor art, I truly overstand. I understand, overstand. Yes, sir. I um, also want to thank my wonderful wife, who's been dealing with me. <laughs> um, it, it's not easy to deal with a black man in America. <laughs> and it's, it's difficult when you have these uh, things in your life that come up and you have to contend with them and they affect the family. Yes, you know, so the wife has to take on a lot of the brunt and, and pick up where she shouldn't have to pick up and do some things where she shouldn't have to. So I really want to thank my wife for over seven years. Thank you for dealing with me. <laughs> I also want to thank you for showing up today. Right. Well, we up here speaking, nobody was here, right? Yeah. So thank you for showing up and spending your time with us. You will be elevated today. That's right. You know, Dr. Evan has a show called Elevated Places. Is that right? Yes, sir. So you will definitely be elevated. So I want to go into it just real quick. If you don't mind, I'd like to read a little bit. Is that fine? Yes, sir. I praise you a lot. So where to know that our education system is jacked up? Yes, Let me just read something from our uh, San Diego Boston viewpoint, just to give a little bit of background information. Um, it says, we have to realize that we are moving backwards and the country has to realize that the greatest national security and economic security threat is not from some outside enemy. It is from our failure to invest in these children and spending all this money on prisons instead of schools. Mm. All right? You know about the school to prison pipeline, right? Yes, and you, you know we have private prisons. Right. Yes, sir. Those who don't know or understand what that means is somebody's getting paid for somebody to go to jail. Right. So every time they lock up one of us, they get paid. Mm -hmm. So they're going to create a system for us to get locked up. Yes, right. And it starts with the education system. Mm -hmm. All right. So I know I have a limited time, so let me go ahead and move forward. Um, have y'all heard of this magnificent, majestic book? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mine is a little eaten and devoured and <laughs> studied with. Right. Um, I've had this book since, uh, looks like, uh, the year 2000. And I've read it several times, and I'm still learning from it. Yes, sir. So I advise you, get your own copy. Right. Please get your own copy, Message of the Black Man. That's right. All right. So on page 41 of Message of the Black Man, the Exalted Christ says, the acquiring of knowledge for our children and ourselves must not be limited to the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. It should instead include the history of the black nation, 
the knowledge of civilization, of man, and the universe, and all the sciences. It will make us a greater people for or of tomorrow. We must instill within our people the desire to learn and then use that learning for self. This is highlighted. We must be obsessed with getting the type of education we may use toward the elevation, is that word, elevation and benefit of our people. When we have such people among us, we, make, we must make it possible for them to acquire this wealth which will be beneficial and useful to us. So, are we learning about ourselves really in this education? No. No, really. No, we're not. We're learning the opposite of that. That's right. You know, I and mean, then when we learn the opposite of that, we get the results that we have. Okay. Right. All right. So, I know uh, growing up, being in the streets, somebody talk bad to you, say a word, they'll say, okay, well, what you gonna do then? Mm -hmm. What you gonna do about it then? Well, we have an answer to that. We have an if and a then. So if we're not getting the correct education that we're supposed to get, then we have this to build for ourselves. They're called the ministries. And there's several of them. I'll read just a few for the little work of time you see. Uh, we'll start with education. Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Education is the responsible is responsible for the mental and moral development of the community by means of formal instruction and a system of learning, ranging from primary to advanced degrees. The educational system includes teachers, instructors, and staff who shall teach and train students in the way of righteousness, decency, and self-respect with the goal of making a better nation of people. Now, you know we're not getting this in the enemy's education. <laughs> so we have to bring our children out of the enemy's education have to. Right. if we want different results. That's right. right. right? So um, I just wanted to lay that on you. There's nine ministries. Um, if you are not in education, but there's a Ministry of Criminal Justice, there's a Ministry of Arts and Culture, if you're artistic, there's a Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Information, Trade and Commerce, so there's a branch for you to land on in the Nation of Islam. Right. Yes, sir. All right. So, I inspire you to go ahead and after the meeting, come see us, see about the ministries, and see where you can land. Uh, no further ado, I'd like to uh, start talking about the next speaker. <coughs> And the next speaker is our local representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Hart. Just saying that gives me butterflies. <laughs> He's the representative of the minister. Now, the minister saved many of our lives. That's right. You know, to think about a man who, for me, I wasn't getting married. No, I was a player player, like many of us were. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. But a man to inspire you to get married. Right. Not only get married, to be dedicated to that one life. Come on. Brothers, one wife. <laughs> All right? And not only that, but to bring in children and raise them up in the way that they should go. You know, to be a godly man. Yes, this sir. is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's work. That's right. You know, right. so with that, we have a local representative that mimics the minister. Mm. He tries to do the same thing that the minister does. Yes, sir. You know, I remember one time when the minister was coming to San Diego. And you have to understand the seriousness when you hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You want to make sure you listen to every single word. Right. So we're driving, we're going down to the convention center, we're on the freeway. And this is, I think it's the first time I've ever stopped on the freeway, just pulled over to the side and stopped. He wanted to hear every single word of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's serious, family. So what the brother's going to do today, he's going to bring you a word and bring up the speaker for today. But just think about it, how powerful words are. Sisters, if somebody called you out your name, you ready to fight. Oh, so we. 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 They call oh, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> and, and brothers, you know, the same thing, right? We're ready to fight, too. So if you look at the word, the word has power. So in the beginning was the word, and the word became what? Flesh. So now we have to take this energized word, this elevated word, and make it flesh. Is that right? Yes, sir. So with no further delay, this brother's going to elevate us a step further. Yeah. And with no further ado, put your hands together for a good minute. Stop doing what you want. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, we give him thanks, we give him praise. We can never thank Almighty God Allah enough for his love that after giving us life that we all appreciate, the next greatest gift and love that God has given to us is guidance 
to a people and humanity that have gone astray. God's mercy and love is found in his scriptures. So as a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he has taught me to respect that guidance that came from Moses in the Old Testament, the guidance that came from Jesus and the New Testament, the guidance that came from Muhammad ibn Abdullah and the Holy Quran. May the peace and blessings of Allah be on those worthy servants. I'm a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and I'm grateful for him showing me God's intervention in our affairs. Yes, sir. As God has intervened in the Old Testament, whether it's in Babylon, whether it's been in, uh, uh, in Egypt with a quote-unquote Pharaoh, or even the time of Jesus, God's intervention have always been there to guide us. The black man and woman of America undoubtedly fit so many aspects of the scriptures that we find in the Old and the New Testament. That's right. That's right. The entire New Testament is based on the people that were in bondage. Mm. That because of that bondage and a promise that was made to Abraham in the 15th chapter of Genesis, that God told Abraham that he should know of a surety right. that he was going to come after 400 years of our bondage and servitude to a people in a land that was not our own. Go ahead. God said, I've heard your moaning and I heard your groaning. Come on, man. And I've come to see if all that I hear is one. 100%. Now, we knew God already knew it was 100%. Right. But God was showing you and I how thorough he is yeah, in right. all that he do. Yeah. We also have to be thorough. Yeah. So if God has intervened in the affairs of men and women that you and I have read throughout the scripture, you know, we see no reason why God would stop right. after he found another people that had been in bondage and enslaved for 400 years right. in these hells we call North America. Come on. Right. Now, you could look at the 400 years of bondage and starting from 1619 yeah. to 1919, but we know from the most on Elijah Muhammad that that first slave ship came in 1555 yeah. under yeah. the name of the good ship yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So we thank God that after that 400 years of hearing our moaning, our groaning, and brothers and sisters, we still moaning and groaning to this very day. We ain't stop moaning and groaning yet. So and my brother said the educational system has failed us. Yes, right. My great sister, Sister Starla, a great teacher, we got yeah. something now that's inside the system right. that's making the system work. Right. There is some of them that's here today because just because the system is broken don't mean we don't have that. not working very hard in the system to make sure that it works. Right. But God's love of the black man and woman was made known mm. when as he did in the past, he's done it again and intervene in the affairs of human beings. Yeah. And this time he intervened in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. Yeah. We know him to be what is called the Mahdi. Yeah. We thank God for coming. We thank God for sifting us. Right. And in 1930, he found one mm -hmm. that was worthy to lay a word on. Mm -hmm. In 1931, actually. He found one that was worthy to lay a word on. That man is so misunderstood in America that when we hear his name, what your enemy have taught you, and I know you find it hard to see there they go, they all talking about the enemy. Well, what do you call someone who beat you? What do you call someone who raped your woman? What do you call someone who chastised or castrated your man? What do you call someone that deny you education, deny you freedom, justice, and equality? You can't be afraid today to say enemy. God ain't afraid to say enemy. He said that you got to love one and do what to the other. Hate the, hate the other. That ain't us talking. I know you say, oh, I knew those Muslims. They always talk about, hey, stop it. You go find us today talking about God, talking about love, talking about what's necessary for us to do to get out of the condition that we're in and to acknowledge that God has seen value, found purpose, and have love for you, and he's come to deliver you from your task, man. Right, so we right. thank him for raising the most honored Elijah That's Muhammad, right. yes, the most misunderstood black man in America. That's right. Some of you may be watching the series right now that's on television that's called The Godfather of Harlem. Mm. Misrepresentation yes. of the nation of Islam. Yes. Some of you may be watching Who Killed Malcolm X? Yes. 
right. much of it misrepresentation right. of the nation of Islam. Right. Right. But we are so willing to listen to what our enemy have said, but a man and men who have done so much good, we have doubt in them, but one who have showed us hatred, we want to believe him and trust in him. But well, why do we know Elijah Muhammad is the man that he is? In? Because ain't nobody else produced students that have shook up the world in America and throughout the world right. like the most on Elijah right. Muhammad. You can't find one. I'm not writing, I'm not posting. Yes, but I'm telling us about a man. You don't have to see him as the spiritual leader that I see him. Right. But you got to see him as one who come to liberate and has been uncompromising in standing for freedom, justice, and equality. Yeah. The nation of Islam is looked at in two areas. Come on. Most of you see us in only one. The social aspect of who we are. You know when something go bad in the community, ooh, we call them the Muslims. Right. Oh, y'all in trouble now. Here come the Muslims. The, the Muslims is coming. Oh, y'all go get it now. White man, look out. Right. Oh, the Muslims is here. Right. So you know us from our social engagement. Right. But you don't know us from our theological and our intellectual and the capacity to read what we call prophecy in the Bible and to see you and I to see all of humanity and to see where we stand. Oh, that's how the most on Elijah Muhammad have taught us. And that's why students like Warthin Muhammad, that's why students like Malcolm X, that's why students like Muhammad Ali and many others that came up in the 60s and the 70s and many of us who are here today in the 2000s and the 90s. But the greatest of his students, is a man that this world has spent a lot of time making you hate. Right. I know when we say the arms of Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of God, many of you get upset. Yes, but you can represent a messenger that you don't know nothing about. Right. You can pick up the Bible and talk about someone that you don't know what the tithes, the visits, and the baptists are in the Bible, but you want to act like you know what it's talking about. Right. And if we fully understood what it was talking about, our lives wouldn't be in the condition. Yeah. How do we know Elijah Muhammad is a man of God? Because as my brother Charles said, he changed the lives of men and he changed the lives of women. He took me one that was on a college campus, a big fool, a dope seller, a womanizer. But today I've been married to the same woman, my beautiful wife, for 34 years. I ain't gonna say I ain't giving no problems, I ain't giving no trouble. But as I stayed in the process of the teaching of the most of Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of the Alma Minister Louis Farrakhan, she got what she said she wanted when she was a little girl. She said, I want to marry a man like Jesus. Well, I wasn't that when she married me, but the process that God has given to us is making us into Jesus. That's why Jesus said, why marvel what I do? He shall do greater work. We got to walk in the footsteps of a master if we want to become a master. This world don't teach you that. So the Alma Elijah Muhammad and produce great men. He produced great women. Yeah. Yes, sir. And he's still producing them through the Alma Minister Louis Farr. So when we say Elijah Muhammad is a messenger, many get upset in the Christian world. Many get upset in the Muslim world. And some just get upset, period. They don't even know why they're upset. They just upset. But this man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, is more than just a messenger of God. Say that. This man, Elijah Muhammad, is the fulfillment of the scriptures that you read up in the Bible and in the Holy Quran. In fact, he is the one that escaped the death plot and is now risen and at the right hand of God. I'm not going to get into all of that today. Yes, sir. Because some of us, y'all know you came from the church. I don't want to offend you. But I want to tell you about a man today and what a man who has made women, a man who has made men. But he taught us about the value of the woman. And that woman is able to talk about today. But that chief student that is amongst us today is the most misunderstood man. A man that has been on the battlefield for over 65 years in oh. represent black folks. You can't find another. They've offered them money. They've offered them gold. They offered them gold in America. They offered them gold in Saudi Arabia. But he said the only reason that he exists right. is because of the black man and woman right. and the oppressed yes. of the world. That man today yes. represents the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes. He's God's servant in our midst. Yes. He is this right. greatest helper of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. That man that the honorable minister of Farrakhan. I greet you, my dear sisters and brothers. We say once again in the Arabic language, Aisalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to tear because the time is at hand. Yes. I see yes. our dear sister is here. We're going to move very, very all praise is due to Allah. I met Minister Ava Muhammad some 30-something years ago as a young student, and she was a young student to teach the most honorable Elijah Muhammad under the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And she is an example of what 
God have said us through the arm of Elijah Muhammad that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. Right. And she have shown that because she was the only one, the first woman to be assigned to a major mosque in the nation of Islam where she headed a region Come where sometimes, you know, in Christianity and Islam, you can't put a woman on the rock. I don't know where they got that from because the, who was around Jesus was the women. I don't know where they got that from because the one that was around Prophet Muhammad, some of his closest confidants, his wife, Kadisha, Aisha, these were women that he looked up, that were vanguards in the, 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 the wave of righteousness. So when you see women rising, that's how you know a nation is rising. Yeah. So what we see today in the dumbing down, the destruction, the, mis the abuse, and the misrepresentation of who women are. And this was a socially engineered process. Yes, it was. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, a nation can rise no higher than this woman because we have to understand without the woman there would be no man. God, after he developed himself, the next thing God developed was another man. The next thing he developed was the process that could make man and woman. And so when he developed and evolved himself, the first creation, the first act of creation was woman. Yes, and this is why in the Bible, after he created everything, he created a man and said, it's not good for man to be alone. I know what you've been told, that woman was created from the rib of, of, of man. That ain't true. You find that in the second chapter of, of, of the book of Genesis. But in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, God said male and female, he created them both from one essence. So somebody else is telling you something. So if you don't understand scripture, if you're waiting on your pastor or me as the minister to read it for you and to give it to you, then you'll never understand it. Because most of us, you know what we say, we go buy our Bible. Brother, I go buy my Bible. I go buy my Quran. That's right. The Quran up on the shelf, you go buy it every day. The Bible on the head table, you go buy it every day. We want you to stop going buy your Bible. We want you to go in your Bible. That way something to go in our heads. Is that all right? I see her as a woman of God. She's a mother. Yes. After a servant of God and a helper of his Messiah. She is a mother. She is a wife. She's a prolific author. Yeah. She's a skilled defender in the courtroom and also in the Bible and in the scriptures of yeah. God. Yeah. I see this woman as a warrior to help the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and an example of how to call women and how to help women be what God designed for us to be. Right. What we see today on television, we hear in the music, is not God's intention for us. That's right. And so if we don't have one that's going to teach us accordingly, we want to say, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. Now, but you don't realize the dress you just bought with the cleavage showing. I ain't talking. Now, let me look time. For, some of y'all might have some cleavage showing. I don't want you to be upset with me. I, I, I you, you know, we, we ain't come down. We made every mistake we talk about. Every last one of us in here did that. So we ain't judging. We just telling us the truth. Is that all right? So we got to get better at what we do when we do what we do. So the scripture asks the question: How can they know? unless they have a teacher. Right. And how can they have a teacher unless one is sent? Jesus in the eighth chapter of the book of John, and I want to bring my sister up. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Come on. See, if we are to be made free, there's a particular truth that we must know. And one of the key truths that we must know, woman must know the value of herself and man must know the value of woman because until we know the value of woman, we will never be able to grow into the men that God intended for us to grow into. The woman is the key to God. The woman is the key to God. I know we say that the black man is God and you are. But our dear brother, that great, I know who it is, honey. I, I'm trying to, that, he, he is that, that biblical scholar, yeah. the poet, the prophet. Yeah. He said, it is a man's world. Right. <laughs> it is a man's world, yeah. yeah. But it would be nothing, nothing. without a woman right. or a girl. Right. So I want to let you know that no matter how good we think we are, brothers, no matter how great we think we 
patriarch, right. without a woman, you can't even know who you are. That's, That's right. why in this why we say marriage is one half of the faith. But this world today do not promote marriage. Nope. I don't have time to get into it today. I'm going to go ahead and y'all you, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Sir. And sister, you got to quit allowing yourself. I, I, I'm going to get in trouble, Dr. Ava. But sister, you got to quit allowing yourself to be sound. That's right. I just got to say it like that because as she come up, I just want to drop something on your mind as you're listening to her. Don't let no man tell you how pretty you are, how beautiful you are. If he love you, haven't put a ring on it. I think somebody will talk about it. Don't you think Beyonce said put a ring on it? I listen to some music. I know a little something, something. Brothers and sisters, you and I are in for a tremendous opportunity That's to right. learn That's this. Right. Yes. I want to thank all those that came before that spoke. My great young assistant, Brother Ahmed, my wonderful sister, Sister Marcia, another woman of God. I want to thank Brother Charles. I want to thank all the laborers and believers and all of you who are here to answer the call. I'm looking to hear from my sister. That's She's right. also our champion for separation. Yes, right. Separation right. coming two phases. One, there must be a mental and spiritual separation. Break it down. And then eventually we have to obey the 18th chapter of Genesis that say, come out of her, my people. Be not yeah. partakers of her sins. Yes, sir. We got to separate. Yes, sir. Right. I know that's scary to some of us. What we go do? Don't worry. God don't never give you a command without giving you people to lead you out of it. Y'all saw Harriet Tubman, right? Yes. If y'all didn't, y'all should go see. Harriet knew how to lead us to freedom. She understood that, but we still need to be led out of the condition that we're in a spiritual and a, a sea of sin that this world have allowed to adapt. I want to introduce to you a woman that is a champion, a warrior, a great helper, of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. She is the national spokesperson. It has been the longest national spokesperson that we have had in the nation of Islam. And she is my sister, my friend, my colleague, sister, minister, student minister, Dr. Ava Muhammad. <laughs> Let's do it. Nice to you. holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, we give praise and thanks to Allah God for his mercy upon humanity. His highest attribute is mercy. And we thank him because always when we go astray, he leads us back to the path to his grace and mercy by raising us <laughs> in our midst prophets and messengers who give us his guidance in real time. And he always raises up from the people he is guiding one of their own kind. The Holy Quran and the Bible name prophets and messengers. And the Holy Quran tells us that we don't know the names of all of them. That's right. And in this last 6,000 year cycle of history, where humanity has been at its lowest because the dark is always deepest before the light. We have to acknowledge and honor some prophets and messengers who had such a profound impact on humanity that their names are mentioned over and over in scripture, in Bible and Quran. We thank Allah for Moses. Musa with the Torah. Yes, we thank Allah for Jesus and the gospel, the New Testament, the revelation of the love that God has for humanity. We thank Allah for Muhammad ibn Abdullah, who received the revelation that yeah. we know as the Holy Quran more than 1400 years ago the book that would lead us out of the darkness of this world and prepare us for the next. I personally, <laughs> beloved, as a black woman in America, a descendants of enslaved and kidnapped Africans, Come on. Mm -hmm. a descendant of people who suffered from lynching, Jim Crow, discrimination, murder, up to this very moment, 
But somehow we survived, and I thank Allah that we were able to survive. And I thank Him for making Himself known to us through the wisdom and guidance of one that if you do not know, you will come to know. The Mahdi, Master Farid Muhammad, yes. a man who came here alone when no one else would help us. Come on. Right? He came here alone from Mecca, Saudi Arabia, yeah. and made himself known July 4th, 1930. Mm -hmm. I thank Allah for him, and I thank Allah that he met a grandson of slaves in the city of Detroit, Michigan. One who had come from the deep south in that ocean of black people, six million <coughs> black people between 1915 and 1970, who escaped the domestic terrorism of the deep south and went to the north seeking life and a better life. They did not find much, but I thank Allah that Master Father Muhammad found Elijah Poole, That's right. who had come up in that ocean of black people with his father and brothers seeking work. He became, after three and a half years with Master Father Muhammad, a man vested with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding such as has not been known in this 6,000 year cycle and certainly not among black people in America. That's right. Teach Elijah. Elijah Muhammad. We know him as the honorable yes. Elijah yes. Muhammad. Indeed, the most yes. honorable yes. Yes. Elijah Muhammad. We believe him to be the promised Messiah yes. and predicted Christ of this Bible and Quran. Right. And we thank Allah for him on this day. Now, I personally never met or knew Master Farid Muhammad or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but I thank Allah that as a young attorney in New York City in the early 1980s diagnosed with cancer, I saw a poster mm. in a subway station mm, that said, Truth crushed to the earth will rise again. Amen. My law degree couldn't help me. My admission to the New York Bar couldn't help me. The money that I was bringing in couldn't help me. Because the disease that had killed my beloved father was now after me. I went out and heard that man. And that man, who you know and is your friend, and has sacrificed himself and his family yes. for our freedom. Yes. You know him well, but you don't know him well enough, beloved. And really, neither do I. Come on, come on. <clears throat> I am talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, and in those names, beloved, and thanking you for being here this morning, I greet you in the words of peace of Isalama Lake. I want to uh, thank, of course, Student Minister Waliola Muhammad, his lovely wife, Sister Walia, the laborers, the believers of Muhammad Mosque number eight here in the beautiful city of San Diego. I want to thank the Fruit of Islam, both from Los Angeles, Muhammad Mosque 27, and here in San Diego, and the Vanguard yes. security yes. teams. <coughs> from both Los Angeles and San Diego for being with my daughter Sherelle and I these last two days. This is one of the rare occasions in the last 30 years that my husband, Brother Darius, has not been here as That's my right. main security, but he was unable to leave Chicago uh, they just ended a teacher strike there, uh, which my beloved brother was talking about, the education and the collapse of the American system. It is falling in our face. And they just returned to class, and my husband uh, is a coach in high school, so he could not come. But I always feel so secure 
with the believers. Yes, and uh, we came down here like a baby plane this morning. <laughs> low flying. <laughs> low flying objects. <laughs> Brother Lee, Brother Arthur, and the, F the FOI brought us down. And we're here. This is so beautiful. I'm not looking forward to going back to 20 degrees <laughs> in the Windy City. So I'm trying to take this in to the best of my ability. I want to also thank, and they just recently uh, hosted us in Los Angeles about six or seven weeks ago, but our West Coast representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Brother Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, and all of the believers and laborers on the West Coast, and I uh, see Sister Queen Amina, of course our national uh, correspondent for the best newspaper yes. on yes. the earth, yes. the Final Call newspaper. <laughs> I hate calling out names, because then you always mess up and leave people. My, my, oh, the speakers that came before me, I was back there listening. I mean, this this is a throwdown boss. This is a teaching boss. This was, I could have just stayed back there and listened. I, and I'm not, I don't say that everywhere I go. No. Trust me, I do not. I say it because it's true. Yes, ma'am. You know, but all of you, you beautiful people who are here and took time from your Sunday morning to be out, and I will not be long, but Brother Minister uh, Waliola asked me to speak on the subject of the woman, the second self of God. Not the second self of man, the second self of God. And very briefly, this book, the Holy Quran, uh, so exalts the woman. Yes, yes. And there's a, a myth and a falsehood that the Muslims do not believe in Jesus. Right. Right. And not only do we believe that Jesus was a Messiah mm. with power to raise the dead to life, but we believe he had that power by God's permission. Yes. yes. We do not see Jesus as God. We see Jesus as a high, highly exalted servant of God and a perfect example, perfect, Come on, beloved, of obedience to his will. This is why Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. He was not saying he was God. He was saying that his mind and spirit were so perfectly yes, aligned right, with yeah. the Creator that to see Him is to see the Creator. Come on, man. One in the same. Wake us up. When He died, He died in the sense of leaving His earthly flesh and earthly desires to subordinate mm. His own will mm. to Think God's will. Mm. Yes. Think Think over that. That. But as my brother said earlier, the critical role of the woman all of the prophets and messengers had mothers. Come on. As I talked about a few weeks ago from the Bible and the Quran, when Jehovah sends Moses to Pharaoh, and he tells Moses to go to Pharaoh and give his command to let God's people go, Moses became nervous and afraid because Pharaoh had absolute power. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he asked Jehovah, can I get some help? Mm -hmm. Can my brother go with me? That's what he said. Because I'm not a speaker, I'm not an orator. Right. But he is. And Jehovah answered and said, Of course I will give you help. I've been helping you all your life. Right. In on. fact, I helped you before you were born when you were in your mother's womb and I was talking to your mother. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Thank you Make it so beautiful. Yeah, come on. Thank you over there. I told your mother what to do when she had you. Because at the time of his birth, there was a law and edict from Pharaoh that all of the sons born to any of the children of Israel were to be thrown into the Nile River and drowned. Yeah. Right. 
Conspiracy. So he told, yes, a conspiracy. He told, uh, uh, Jehovah told Moses' mother to nurse him as long as she could and hide him. But when she could hide him no more, to put him in a basket and put him in the Nile. And she did it. And he told Moses, I relieved your mother of grief <laughs> because I let her know what you would become. Because he told the mother, that baby is going to be one of my messengers. Come on. Yes. Yes. And she sent him in the river and his sister followed the basket Come on. and watched because the daughter, the wife of Pharaoh, in, according to the Holy Quran, not the daughter, the wife was at the river's edge and took the baby to care for him. And when she took the baby, the sister of Moses approached her and said, I know a woman who can nurse him for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Wake us up. And she handed her him right back. You did something? And she brought him back to his mother and she nursed him. And then as he grew up, then he ended up going back right up into the house of Pharaoh. That's right. So every man of God has a mother. Yes. That's the point. Come on. And every human being, male or female, all of us have a mother. Right. Yeah. And our thoughts, our brain, our first spiritual teaching comes from mother. That's Jesus. The second self of God. Mm -hmm. We have a surah or chapter in the Holy Quran named Maryam. Yes. Named after That's Jesus. Right. Think mother. That's right. Think over there. We don't exalt women in Islam. Mm -hmm. You're not Busted following. Up. You're not looking at Islam when you see women being abused. Right. You are looking at right. an Arab or African right. culture oh, right. Right. where that has been allowed. And the most abusive, sexist, wicked, Woman hating culture Come on, on the earth Come on. is the United States. There is a man who is, and you know, I'm a lawyer, so I'm going to be careful. This is not an assertion. This is my opinion <laughs> that you have a sexual predator in the White That's House. Right. That's America. Right. Peace yeah. going around the earth telling other people how to live. Right. The Holy Quran reads in the fourth Peace. chapter or surah, the women. O oh, people, it begins in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. O oh, people, keep your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being and created its mate of the same kind and spread from these two many men and women. And that is the verse that Brother uh, Minister Walilah read from in the Bible. It's very clear that male and female are from a single source, which is the Creator. That's right. Amen. We did not come from nobody's rib on no day. <laughs> come on, be good, man. <laughs> and keep your duty to Allah by whom you demand one of another your rights and to the ties of relationship surely Allah is ever a watcher over you Amen. now we are taught by the honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Louis Farrakhan the true role of the woman and you're not going to find that teaching anywhere on this earth, particularly the beauty of it, That's right. other than in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes. Wake us up. Listen at these words, beloved, from Minister Farrakhan, quoting his teaching. Mm -hmm. And where there are no decent women, mm -hmm. there can never be a decent man. Mm -hmm. And where women are hurled down, Men can never be lifted up. So the destiny of the individual, the destiny of the nation, depends on the mother. The woman 
true to her feminine nature, is really advanced over the man. Shall I read that again? Come on now. Yeah. 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 And this is a man saying this. Right. 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 Thank you, please. Right. 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 This is not me. Right. That's right. Good teacher. The woman, when true to her feminine nature, mm -hmm. is really advanced over the man. She is. Not because of her beauty, right. not because of her accomplishments. Yeah or even the nature of her love, mm. but because she possesses the womb, mm. the laboratory, mm. wherein are fashioned those who will inhabit the world where she cooperates with or is an assistant to a lot of God. Come on now. Thank Thank you. You. In the formation, mm. rep formation, and final completion of the human being. Mm -hmm. There is no reformation without the reform of a woman. Each. Come on, brother. The Holy Quran reads, He creates you in the wombs of your mothers. That's, That's where right. we're all created. That's, right. That's, right. That's in this book, right. the Holy Quran. All human life is created by Allah in the womb of a female. The only being that ever in the history of the universe came into existence without coming through the womb of a female is the self-created God on, yes. mm -hmm. who created himself in and from the triple darkness of space. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. The originator of the heavens and the earth. And before he created anything else, mm -hmm. after he completed his self-creation, he created woman. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After her came everything and everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. We're taught that Islam is mathematics, and mathematics is Islam, mm. and Islam goes back as the root of mathematics, mm. God himself being number one. Yeah. Mm. Yes. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes the most profound declaration I have ever heard, and its effect upon me as a woman is immeasurable, and I want to share it with you. This is from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, talking about the originator. Quote, he wanted a different human being than himself. So he studied himself. He made a woman by studying himself. He made woman secondly so this would solve his problem of a search for another man. Let's look at that. Yeah. X and Y. Th thank you. X and Y. Right. Algebra, right. math. Yeah. Right. This is pure mathematics. Yeah. This is the principle, Ellie, of femininity. A principle is a fundamental or primary truth from which other truths are derived. It is a force which determines the characteristics of who or what it governs. So we, the woman, are governed by the principle of femininity. So in dissecting the statement from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we have to recognize first that it is a divine principle. He states, Allah, quote, wanted a different human being from himself. He didn't say lesser. Right. Come on. Right. Come that's on. right. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. He Language. said different. different. Language. That's right. That's <laughs> the term different means unlike in form or nature mm. 
dissimilar, distinct, or separate. Come on now, come on. The word differentiate means to discriminate between. Discriminate was originally a mathematical term, not race. Oh, wake us up. It did not take on usage in a non-technical sense until 1876. Come on now. Hey. There is no such thing as understanding woman if we don't know anything about man. Come on. Come on. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm just sharing some notes from a little book I was blessed to write, and I don't have any today, but I'll, I'll show you how to we get it. We get a website. That's called right. called Naturally Beautiful. <laughs> But I, this was inspired by working as an assistant to Minister Farrakhan. The woman, the female, you sisters, though characterized in this world as a problem, mm -hmm. God's enemy calls the woman a problem. <clears throat> okay? We're actually the solution to the problem. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's what Satan does. That's right. That's right. Satan teaches you the opposite of the truth, which is called a lie. That's, that's right. right. That's 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 See, the solution to God's first problem was to find another man. Now, not in, not, don't. Don't go there. Don't get, Don't get it twisted. He was looking for someone with the capacity to recognize his achievement. So by man is meant human, meant on his level. Okay? No one is his equal. But he needed someone on his level. Water from which he created himself in the universe, always seeks its level. So the solution to his problem, which was recognition, in the first revelation to Muhammad ibn Abdullah of the Holy Quran, which is actually the 96th surah, the clock, yes. the prophet said that Allah said, I wanted to be known. So I created man. Mm, my Lord. Think of, mm, think of oh. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He created a being that was almost as advanced as him. In fact, the only thing that this being lacked is he wasn't first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we're called God's children of the most high God. That's why he's worthy of praise yeah. and worship. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because he's not a spook, he is a man. Yeah. However, what he did, nobody else can do it for the first time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't care how good that's you right. do it. Right. You'll never do it first. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. He that's created right. something <laughs> out of nothing. That's right. So the best we can do is replicate. That's right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we have to bow. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Come on, beloved. Beautiful. Beautiful. His achievement yes, in his self creation. <laughs> beloved. Six trillion years it took. Wow. The Bible calls it six days. Mm -hmm. The Quran calls it six periods. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said six trillion years mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the cold darkness of space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he needed an advanced being to provide the intellectual, <coughs> emotional, and physical qualities to provide him the comfort and the companionship that he had earned mm. in six trillion years of being alone. And above all, the ability to do it again. <coughs> to reproduce himself. So the female is different, not yeah. lesser. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Play. That's right. She's like him, but unlike him. Mm, beautiful. Similar, but not the same. Right. Right. right, right. The Holy Quran said in the third chapter, called a woman of Imran, 
And that's about <laughs> not Jesus. That's mm. right. Not his mother. Come on. His grandmother. Mm. Wow. Come on. Wake us up. Come on. Yeah. That's right. See, that's how deeply involved the female is Come on. That's in right. making men. Come on, that's right. 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 <laughs> Jesus' grandmother Come on. was a woman of God. Because that chapter is about the birth of Mary. Come yes. on. Right. Go ahead. Come but on. you can't make a Jesus until you Get make a Mary. Mary. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. back to the honorable Elijah Muhammad. I won't be long. Take your time. He made a woman, he said, right? By studying himself. Studying is a verb. That means action. When you study, you apply your mind purposefully to the acquisition of knowledge and the understanding of a subject. Ooh. To study, that doesn't mean you just go on Google. <laughs> That's right. right, right. Hang on, Google. Google pull it up. Pull it up. <laughs> How do you know that happened? I thought it was on Google. Google. <laughs> Come on, minister. <laughs> no, we have to apply our mind to understanding something, not just being informed but having knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Allah, the self-created God, applied himself to learning. L to study means to examine, to scrutinize, to investigate, to ponder, to reflect, mm. and to give careful, critical thought. He engaged in self-examination, self-analysis, and self-correction. He corrected the problem of his loneliness and his desire to recreate himself. So no man, beloved, can become a god unless he studies. Yes. That's right. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. That's right. Point that out. Love and correction. That's right. Allah is the unit one. The female is the unit two. Number two is not lesser. Number two is the product of one plus one. That's right. That's right. That's right. He made a woman secondly. Look, listen at these words again, what we just read. Oh, people, keep your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being, a single being, and created its mate of the same kind and spread from these two many men and women. Thus, in the beginning, there were only those two. The principle of femininity on an atomic level is based on a law, the law of polarity or opposites, which is rooted in the creation of the female by the originator. One definition is that everything, when we say the law of polarity or opposites, Everything is dual. Everything has two poles. There are two sides to everything. Things that appear as opposites are in fact two ends of the same thing. Come on, come on. Heat and cold are varying degrees of the same force. Mm. Satan himself. Yes, man. Go God's arch enemy. Right. Where did he come from? Come on. Good Good question. Question. Wake us up. How do you get so much power right. that God will give you the stature to call you his arch enemy? Right. My right. number one enemy. Right. You gotta be a bad something. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. For God to call you his enemy. Right. Well, where did Satan come from? If we say Allah is everything. Mm. Come on, In the Bible, he said he is Alpha and Omega, That's right. That's right. the beginning and the end. In the Quran, it's, it's nothing beyond him. So where did Satan come from? He was present in the mind 
of the self-created God. Come on. He was the opposite side of himself. And he is key to the self-created God's ultimate goal of perfection. Yes. He doesn't ask us to overcome difficulty right. and to purge ourselves of evil when he hasn't done it. Think over there. Good team. This has been something going on for trillions of years, a process. And you and I are blessed to be born at the time yes. of the ultimate resolution and solution to the problem. Yeah. Shine the light. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Playoffs. This ain't the also ran. Right. This is not something where there's somebody close. Right. This is winner take all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allah created everything in pairs, according to the Quran. That's the words. Yes. Allah created everything in pairs. So the male and female energies are necessary to all life. And really, what I'm getting to, beloved. Yeah. is, and why Brother Minister asked me to address this, there is a problem between the black man and the black woman right now. Yes, yes, yes. That is serious right. and has to be resolved. Yes, right. yes. And it emanates from both of us, male and female, being in a state of disobedience. Yes. Right. That's yes. what it is. There it is. As a result of our respective obedience to him, we become hostile to each other. That same verse, it opens up with keep your duty to who? Oh. Not each other, right. to your Lord. Right. So she don't do this, she don't do that, but your rights to her come from keeping your duty to him. Come on, right. 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 You and I, you and I, come on, come on, sir. I'm not just you, you and I, I said, but he didn't do this, but he didn't do that, he ain't take care of well, are we in obedience? Right, right. Are we keeping our duty to Allah? Right. Because we have no rights in Him. If we're not in obedience to God, our rights. See, I'm supposed to be getting this. Right. Right. And you saying I'm supposed to be getting that. Right. Come on, but our rights emanate yeah, that's right. from our obedience to God. Yeah. Yeah. Allah was searching for another self and he found it within himself and he brought it forward and called it female. The atom contains protons and electrons. The presence of excessive amounts of protons makes the human positive or proactive or male. The presence of excessive amounts of electrons makes the body negative, reactive, or female. It's all math. Two more profound statements from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I'm done. And I want to say a little bit about our current reality. Number one, he said, it is the nature of the woman to seek to satisfy and please the man. <clears throat> Do I need to read that again? Yes, ma'am. Now, sister, before you start hyperventilating, <laughs> take a drink here. A water, a water. It is the nature. The nature is the essence of what makes a thing what it is. The nature of the woman is to seek to satisfy and please the man. Don't say it's not. That's right. Don't say it's not. That's right. We dress the way we dress. Right. We behave the way we behave. Right. We react the way we react because we're always seeking his satisfaction and pleasure, whether we admit it or not. Right. However, he has another statement. Come on, Susan. Come on. <laughs> it is the nature, this is also our nature, mm -hmm. 
And why is it our nature to seek to please the man? Because God is a man. Right. See, you're you're seeking to please God. Yeah. Come on. But the male, he looks like him. <laughs> he possesses all of the traits, physical, mental, emotional, and otherwise. But unless he's in obedience to Allah, then and he's not if he's not aligned with Allah then you don't see a law, and then you don't bow. See, she's happy to bow. She, we love taking care of that man. But that black man, we love you. We want to take care of you. Every female is after the black man. God. But it's more than height, weight, melanin, deep voice. <laughs> no, I mean, you look good, you're fine. But it's more than that. She is made, it's in her DNA. Come on. To bow to God. And that's all she'll bow to. Right. So the white man tells you that she's masculine, she's aggressive, she's out of control. Uh, talk about Serena Williams. He's afraid of her. That's right. That's right. Tell it. Tell it. She has more, more testosterone than the white man. I'm going to say it again. So this is a physiological. He's the made man. He's artificial. The black man is from the mind of the originator. The white man is from the lower regions of the black man. So he's a lesser being than the black woman. The white man I'm talking about. That's true. The only way he can even stay on earth was to rape her and to go into her and produce a hybrid. Open him. But he said it is the nature of the female to demand good treatment. That's right. That's right. So that's why we're always nagging, as it's called. Right. And we can be terrible. <laughs> I mean, we act so crazy. I, I, bear with us. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you're, you're, you're talking crazy. You're loud. You're out of control. And as you're doing it, you're saying, why are you doing this? <laughs> the God self in you is saying, you're acting like a sap. <laughs> you will never get him to respond to you. You already know it, even as you're acting crazy. <laughs> We're out of control. We have to, as one brother said, do you. See? Because everything going on in our lives is a result of what we do. No, it's, it's the children, it's the husband, it's the wife, it's the cousin, it's the girlfriend, it's the co-worker, it's the boss, it's the neighbor, it's the white man. <laughs> but it's all rooted in us. Yes. Because what we do is we draw to ourselves what we really are. Yeah, that's Come right. On. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teach. <laughs> We draw it, we see manifestations of our true self in what's around us. Our thoughts create our environment and our condition. And so if we rise above emotion, as we're taught by Minister Farrakhan, into the thinking of God, yes, yes. then all that come into our sphere 
will be on God's level. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's simple. Teachable. It's that simple. When we, when we lower ourselves to a savage level, right. then the savage in the other person meets us right. on that level. Yeah. And we all, we all do it. Amen. And that's the struggle. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said we struggle for balance. Yes, right. yes. We try to overcome difficulty. Man, this book, Quran says, was created right. to face difficulty. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on, man. So why is it every, no matter what I do, there's always something wrong? Because we're on a certain path. A path to what? To becoming a God. Come on, exactly. beautiful, beautiful. He said man mm. is actually an underdeveloped God. Mm. See, we walk around, I'm a grown woman. I'm a grown man. We're underdeveloped gods. We're not, we're not complete. So when we say I'm a man or I'm a woman, we're just partially there. And we want to stop at that level of development. That's the point. We're not continuing on the path. So the Holy Quran said, Allah said, we created man complete yet incomplete because we have all of the necessary tools but it's up to us to apply them. Yes. Yes. but in closing this second principle of the nature of the female she's going to demand good treatment yes, yes. Right. that's right, right. right. Allah was alone for this immeasurable amount of time mm. So there is no way he would ever or could ever consider anyone his equal. Mm. How could he when he's alone right. six trillion years? Right. Mm. Right. Bringing himself, I can't even fathom how <laughs> it was done. <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's right. In the darkness of space. Mm -hmm. He is first, he is last, he is always. Now, you say, well, he puts himself first. Talking about your husband. Your man. <clears throat> he puts himself first. Where did he get that from? <coughs> it's not in the nature of God to put anyone's needs above his own. Even while he is the supplier of all of our needs. And he says in the Holy Quran of himself, it's one of my favorite statements, it makes you just love a lot. <clears throat> He said, I'm above me that's right. of my creation. That's right. But that's how you have to be. Above need of your creation. That's how you get peace and submission. Come on, come on. Now what do you mean? What do you mean I'm above me? I need to eat, I need to sleep, I need to have air. But you don't let what you need dictate to you how you should think and conduct yourself. That's right. Come on. Right. Come on. Tell the truth. That's right. That's yes. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So a, a man who's self-respected does not want a woman on his arm that other men are hissing at. That's Ooh. right. Like Ooh. reptiles. That's right. right. I think Kanye is going through that now. <laughs> Kanye West. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's expressing regret over how the, the image of his wife, which attracted him. But look at what it brought with it. But a God-fearing man wants to be with a God-fearing woman. That's right, that's right. No father wants his daughter. No husband wants his wife. No uncle wants his niece. No grandfather wants his granddaughter. And he goes on and on. Yes. Disrespecting herself by putting herself on display. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Tell the truth. Where she attracts the lower self of other men. Because a man demands respect in his nature. It's the nature of the man, sister, to be in authority. Yeah. Right. Wake right. Up. right. I'm not saying a dictatorship or right. tyrant, right. but 
Somebody has to make the final decision. White people made that up about a democracy and it's not even real. This ain't no democracy, everybody. It's not even real. right now that our former slave master and his children are taking advantage of right. Come on. because it's leading to the allowance of the breakup of the black family That's right. That's because right. Right. you cannot have a black family if you don't have a black man and a black woman who are loving each other and at peace with each other. That's right. That's right. That's right. And if you don't have a family, you don't have a community. That's right. That's right. And if you don't have a community, that's when the cops come in and shoot and kill at will. That's, right. that's when foreigners come in and sell liquor and drugs and come on. guns come on. and put their hands on our young right. girls. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. This yeah. has to stop. Yeah. Right. The yeah. intrusion yeah. of strange people, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to the black man, you let strange men yeah. come, come around your right. women right. and your girls. Right. 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 They got to go. Yeah. They got to go. Yeah. 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 That's right. Now, since the female was brought from Allah for the express purpose of fulfilling his desire and need, sisters. That's why it's at the core of our nature to seek to please the male. Because Allah himself, the originator, created us for his satisfaction and ability to reproduce himself. So he, however, in order to protect his second self from oppression yeah. come on. by the first self, come on. Come on. he put it in the second self's nature to demand good treatment. Yes, yes. Beautiful. 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 Because consideration of number two does not come natural to number one. Okay? Number one ain't worried about number two in that sense. I don't care if you're 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 upset. I'm upset. Come on, sister. So he makes her capable of Upsetting the stability of your life mm. <laughs> sure. uh -huh. right. until you recognize. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we say the unhappy woman is hell. <laughs> and the only help for a man is in a woman. <laughs> of the male to, to worry about her wants and needs, but it is an acquired trait. Good. See, we're born, all of us, with the capacity to be patient and considerate of others. Yes. But, and even women, even us, the human being, the Quran said, is created impatient. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Quran says to the human being, when you're in trouble, you call me. That's right. That's a lot of talking. You right. call me when you need no, trouble. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. He said you're lengthy in supplication. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Praying and crying and leaves. 
And if you didn't give me out, I'll just I'll get out of the bag. I'll get out of the bag. That's what we do. That's what we do. Never! Never! Never. Please! Please, is all about that guy. And the moment he delivers us, he said, we go right back to his position. My Lord. But if we can discipline ourselves to live in accord with these principles, and there are many more, we can find harmony in our relationships. Right. Yeah. Both men and women devote more energy to our critique and our effort to change each other than we devote to self-examination, right. mm. self-analysis, and self-correction. You, okay. you know. True. Let's accept our own and be ourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. Now, I just wanted to say I was blessed. I thank Brother uh, Salim Muhammad, out of Mosque number 27, one of our <coughs> up-and-coming bright stars. Yes, yes, he is. Because um, he made it possible for me to speak yesterday and Brother Minister Abdul Malik Saeed to speak at uh, California State at Long Beach. Jeez. And I spoke last night about um, the U.S. economy, and I'm not going to do that today, but I do want to say this because it's relevant to the powerful issue of the female. And our lack of understanding of her, when I say I mean male and female, because we don't know as women our value. That's right. Okay? We had to be taught that. We can't right. walk around like we do. That's right. we, we've been in, in a terrible situation for a long time. But I just wanted to dispel this myth as reparations is the hot topic right now. Yeah. And about every 30 years it comes up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, you know, the enemies of the United States get reparations. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yes. right. Enemies. Right. Come on. People they went to war with. Right. 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 Can't wait to write a check. Right. Right. Come, on. Come on. Go to war, right. as Tone Love would say, two, three, nine years. Mm. <laughs> okay. Get me. And then at the end, you know, well, here's a check for $10 trillion, you right. know, to help rebuild right. Uh, right. what we blew up. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we 450 Come years on. in Come this on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And we have been nothing but your friend. That's right. That's right. Your teacher. All right. Built your nation. Come on. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. But what you have to commit yourself to Make sure when you hear conversations on radio, social media, make sure you respond. People just talking. Don't let people make mockery and politicize reparations the way I hear them doing. Right, right, man. This economy, because there's this big uh, thing that's taught in U.S. history and it's acceptable in U.S. culture, that slavery was some little finite six month affair. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch McConnell, oh, right, right. Senator from Kentucky, right. the most broke state in America, biggest parasite, mm -hmm. take more federal money than any state in the union. Yeah. Kentucky, you represent mm -hmm. Kentucky and got the nerve to talk. Okay, but he said, well, <laughs> rep reparation, he got those little black eyes like a shark. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, we don't uh, believe in reparations because yeah. that's something that happened 150 years ago. None of us were alive. Isn't that what he said? That's, now that's the, 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 the speaker, the U.S. Senator. Right, right. Okay? I forgot his title, but he's, he's the majority the the lead Senate. of the U.S. The Senate. Senate. That's the government. The highest level, the, the Senate chamber, dismissing mm -hmm. reparations out of hand. Mm -hmm. 
Bernie Sanders, Democrat, they ask him about reparation. Now here's a Jew mm -hmm. who sits and signs off on Israel getting $10 billion right, a year. Right, right. That's right. When he was uh, told about reparations, he said, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. What is there to understand? Wake us up. But I just want to say this. Don't let anybody ever tell you that was then and this right. is now. Right. So right. get over it. Right. Right. Because the U.S. economy was created, developed, and to this very moment is sustained by the labor of kidnapped Africans and their descendants. Now we know about one kind of labor maybe two, but there's a third type of labor, a, a, a very scientific and real classification of labor that has escaped our awareness because it's not taught, we don't focus on it, and only now are scholars in history, black and white, starting to zero in on this. Initially, we were brought here to primarily clear land and make it habitable and controllable and useful. Now mind you, these are the same people that wrote a Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. from the monarchy, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And in 1776, when the U.S. came into existence, slavery was legal in every single one of the 13 states. Mm. So forget about this, as the minister said, this north-south thing, and we want to pull down the Confederate flag. You need to pull down all your flags if you want to pull down flags. Because we have suffered under every last one of them. But once it was determined to focus heavily on cotton, cotton became America's first big business. It was the number one export in the 1800s. It was fueled by Britain's process of industrialization and focus on textiles. Now what did that do? That increased the demand for cotton. That provided higher prices for cotton. And it also created a need for more bodies to plant and pick the cotton. Okay. The richest people in America in the 1800s, the millionaires, were in the South. That's right. That's right. Not in the North like today, but in the South. Mm -hmm. But our history books teach us that the end of the Atlantic slave trade was the result of some kind of moral consciousness. No. <laughs> no. No. And they show you in the movies, yeah. oh, we have to stop the trade. And, Right. It's so terrible how they treat the slaves on the ship. Right. This is awful. This is horrible. Right. And they're feeding the sharks and all of this with black people. No, that's not why they stopped it. Right. 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 They stopped the Atlantic slave trade Come on. Come on. because you, right. the tribe of Shabazz, Come on. Right. it's another day. <laughs> the tribe of Shabazz. Shabazz means indestructible. Right. Yeah. Indestructible. From 1555, when our ancestors were first brought here, most of them children. Right. Mm. When they were first brought here to 1755, in that period of time, not only had we figured out how to survive right. Right. in human treatment mm. and torture. We not only survived what no living creature could have survived, we actually, as we do, we adapted. Our strength and our weakness is the same thing. We adapt. That's why we still like we are, because we adapt. Sometimes you shouldn't adapt, you should destroy. Right. to make it to this day, okay? We adapted because initially when we were brought here, more of our babies died in infancy and childhood 
then made it to adulthood. By 1755, not only had we survived, we were reproducing at a rate that the number of black children who reached adulthood outnumbered those who died. So that's where that statement came from. We don't die, we multiply. Now that's real. That's real. So America shifted from international slave trade, which is expensive, deadly, and then you got to take these black people from Africa, Africa and make them bow. That takes years, yes. generations. Mm -hmm. They switched over to domestic slave trade. Mm -hmm. And that's the other form of labor. See, there's three of them. This economy is based on labor. <coughs> labor, understand it. And there's three kinds. One is forced, which is our people. Well, we will, all of it is us. Another one, though, that we don't know is reproductive labor. Reproductive labor. Meaning that the black woman was forced to bear as many children as her body could do and rear them to be slaves. You had sisters having 12 and 15 and 20 children. You had black women starting to have babies at the age of 13 and at age 50 they're still having them. Are you listening to me? We're not going to play that off. That's right. Oh, us. In 1780. There were 800,000 enslaved black Africans in America. 800,000. By 1860, there were 4 million of us. Black women. Many the offspring of the slave owner. What type of psychosis Come on, are we talking about? And somebody said it is true. Most of us, mm -hmm. look at you, the darkest person in here. You, you don't even know what black is. Man. The triple darkness of space that Allah came out of, you couldn't see no hand in front of your face. In that darkness, this is a dark blackness of, has substance. Yes, ma'am. Reproductive labor. Infinity. The black woman had to bring forth the life for the white man to destroy it. Mm -hmm. My God. And so what had been the number one crop, which was cotton, became number two. The most valuable asset was us. The state of Maryland, you know Alabama, known for cotton, Carolinas, tobacco, Louisiana, the rice plantations. Guess what Maryland was? Breeding plantations. And I close on this, that's where Harriet Tubman was from. Maryland. I want you to see that movie because, and, and read her uh, biographies, because she lived until 1913. She lived to be 90 years old, and she was able to tell and narrate her life, which was incredible. We don't know suffering, beloved. We're very blessed. We really are. Right. And sometimes when I'm in a bad situation, I'll say this to myself, you ain't picking cotton. Mm -hmm. I've actually That's said right. it to myself. Right. Mm -hmm. 
You're not standing there with your grandbabies in your arms and the devil just come and take them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never to be seen again. Right. That's right. Harriet Tubman said uh, that as a child, she preferred being out in the field to being in the house because of the smothering presence of the white woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stump of the planet Earth. That's right. Oh, right. She told of a mistress having a what she called a great argument with her husband and taking her anger out on Harriet. And she beat her so bad they had to carry her out. When she was 14, a slave owner was throwing an iron at a brother who was trying to escape. And Harriet stepped in and got hit in the forehead. And she went into a coma and she was plagued the rest of her life with seizures. But the essence of her story is this. This is a woman, you know we talked about unnamed prophets? Right. She was a prophet and a liberator. That's right. She was able to do what she did for one reason. She was in obedience to and in communication with God. God told her what to do, where to go, when to do it, how to do it, who to speak to, who not to speak to. Very specific instructions. And when you think about it, what other way could she have done this? Bring wisdom. Oh, you want to escape slavery? Well, just take I-75. Right. <laughs> Till you get to Chattanooga and get on 60. Yeah. Hey, really? Yeah. <laughs> You're walking. You have no shoes. There's wildlife. The slave catchers are after you. The dogs, you have nothing to eat. So a woman that weighed 90 pounds when she was wet, Five feet tall, she had a gun that was bigger than her. <laughs> and once you left with her, you can decide if you wanted to go or not. But once you left that plantation with her, you weren't going back. No buyer's remorse. She pulled a gun on her brother, her blood brother, because they were. She would get slaves in little clusters of six or maybe a dozen. And she had made it to Philadelphia and could have just stayed there and lived a life among middle class right. free people, free black people who were middle class. She said, no, I'm going back. I can't do this. I can't leave my family, my siblings, my parents. And they're telling her, no, you can't go back down there. She told a group of them, and Frederick Douglass was in the room in one, right. one of the scenes, and she said, see, the problem with you all, you're too comfortable. That's right. <laughs> and some of you have lived in comfort for so long, you forgot. Right, right. what our people are suffering right. Right. and some of you were born free right. so you don't know anything right. about this and that's how some of our people that's right. Right. they right. live in a bubble right. 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 Well, that Farrakhan he just hates right. <laughs> <laughs> because you're deaf, dumb, and blind right. 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 but she would pray she prayed like this yes, with her hands outstretched <laughs> But at, at one scene, and I'm going to sit down, they were escaping, and they were waiting for the slaves. And she was bringing so many people out of the South, it was driving white people crazy, the owners. They passed a law, the Fugitive Slave Act, That's right. to allow people, if you were found in a free state such as Pennsylvania, you, it was against the law. Once anybody knew who you were, they had to send you back or see to it that like like a lost phone, you will return to your home. That's because of Harriet Tubman, all right? 
and they were arguing over who could this Moses start calling her Moses. Who could she? Who could it be? They said it was a man dressed as a woman. But it, it and somebody said it's a black woman. Oh, it can't be. <laughs> it's it's a white person in black Because no nigga could do, could do this. <laughs> But they told her, you can't go back, you can't, you don't know how to read, you, 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 you can't read a map. She said, I don't need a map, I talk to God. And some people think they saw a scene where she was uh, saved by a white man and he said, no, go see this thing. Right. And be and, and pay attention to dialogue. That's right. <laughs> pay attention. Because we have knee jerk emotional reactions, and sometimes, as the minister said, there are facts, and then we create another set of facts in our mind and misinterpret the actual fact. That's right. All right? But she didn't bow to nobody. Even when one white man put her on his wagon and drove her a certain distance to get her to the state line. When she got off that wagon, she didn't say, oh, thank you, white man, oh, baby. She said, thank you very much. Come went on about what she had to do. That's right. And she told all of them, nobody tells me what to do. Nobody tells me, because they said, you can't, nobody tells me what I can't do after what I just did. But I'm saying to all of us, that's how we have, you don't let anybody tell you when God moves you. That's right. And I left there saying to myself, to myself, Ava, you're just playing. Mm -hmm. You playing like you, you militant and you a warrior. <laughs> you not committed. This woman was committed. Yeah. Minister Farrakhan is committed. Come on, brothers, and let's give this neighbor a nice big and all praises do for Allah. All praises do God. Now, you got both the theology and a little social, and we thank Almighty God for that very quickly, very quickly. Uh, just a couple of, now, how many of you here, please be seated, I need about 10 minutes, and you've been such a perfect, beautiful, wonderful audience. So I thank you. Give us 10 more minutes. Can I see your hand if you're here for your very first time? Your very first time being here. Raise your hand for me, please. Raise your hand nice and high for your very first time amongst us. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice big hand. <laughs> Brothers, at the end of every meeting, we just have a couple questions to ask you. Those of you that are visiting with us for your very first time, how many of you believe what you heard today from my dear sister, student minister, Dr. Ava Muhammad, what you heard from to be true and good for yourself, good for our people, good for humanity? If you believe that, can I see your hand, please? Very good, very good. Now I have another question, because once you recognize, accept, and say you believe it to be the truth, are you willing to take that bold stand now to unite behind the one she have united behind, the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan, and start the journey of learning more of what you heard and becoming a part of the Nation of Islam? If you were to make that bold stand, and what you heard today to unite with us, on the Minister Farrakhan and start to learn more. Can I see your hand if you'd like to do that? Let me see your hand. Raise your hand high. Raise them high, brother. See, if you're ready to make that bold stand, let me see your hand. Raise them again. Those that are willing to let me see you stand up. Those that raise your hand, stand up for me. Don't be afraid. You raise your hand, go ahead and stand. Sis, I saw a couple of sisters. Okay, they don't want to stand up. If anybody else would like to learn more, what I'd like to do, now keep standing. If the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was here, and he would ask for the honor and the privilege of shaking your hand. So I'm going to ask Minister Ava to shake the sister's hand, and I'm going to shake the brother's hand on behalf of all of Minister Farrakhan. My dear sister, come on forward. A good friend of ours already anyway. All praises to God. I saw a couple others that raised their hand. You're not ready to come up front. 
I want you to see uh, Sister Mary or Sister Captain at the end. So just come and shake Dr. Abraham for me, please. I need a few more minutes of your time, and it will be going. So nobody, please do not leave. Brother, if y'all come this way, on behalf of that, I'd like for you to, to shake your hand while I'm in the same talk. We're going to close out very quickly. Just want to say welcome. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Brother Sister Mary, moving very quickly. Thank you so much. On behalf of... You know, very quickly, those of us that are here, we have just a couple quick announcements while Minister Ava go back, and we want to thank, we're going to bring her back for what we call a, a town hall on separation, yeah. where she'll talk yeah. about Shabbat, yeah. she's going to talk about all those different things that's pertinent to us. Before you run out, she talked about some things about what it was like in the South. We have some books in the back, which is called The Seek Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, book two document some tremendous things about what the slave trade was like and everything that goes on. Next week we have, we'd like to invite you, we have two beautiful events next week. One is dealing with Malcolm X um, and the Nation of Islam, the Counterteller's program. If you know that over the last couple of months there's two uh, features that's on television that deal with Malcolm X, I mentioned it earlier, one being uh, the Godfather of Harlem that features uh, Bumpy Johnson, a gangster, Adam Clayton Powell, politician, and Malcolm X, one of the students of the author, Elijah Muhammad. That's on you. A lot of misrepresentation of all those men, because even the misrepresentation about Bumpy, because he went to jail when Malcolm was just coming out of prison in fifth, or uh, coming out of prison in '52. Bumpy was going to prison himself in '53. He didn't get back out of prison until '63 or '64, and that would have been after Malcolm um, had had stepped away and been sat down by the most Elijah Muhammad. So a lot of misrepresentation. So next week. On Saturday right here and I want everybody to get one of these flyers before you leave because both events we're gonna have a question and answer with myself and our dear brother uh, student minister Demetric Muhammad who is one of our research members of the minister the Alba Minister Louis Farrakhan who's actually writing a book right now deal with math with some of our scholars to give you so we, there's no question that's off limit we ain't gonna get upset you know well didn't y'all kill Malcolm you know, no, we didn't, but we'll talk about it all. We don't mind if you ask, though. It doesn't matter what you want, because if you ask a question and have a sincere knowledge you want to know, that's what we're here for. There's nothing that we have to hide. The following day, Brother Demetri will be right here again, and he's going to deal with something that's called, it's from the scriptures, suffer the little children unto me. And it's talking about a lot of God, Satan, and the war for our youth. Sisters, brothers, we're using, losing our young men and our young women. Yeah. We have to do something, and that means we have to come together to solve some of these problems. But one of the last things I'd like to do, I really want to thank some of our guests that I know some of us went out the way to really invite. I want to start. I saw my dear sister, Keila uh, Weber, uh, from the councilwoman from La Mesa. I know she was here. Um, she, she might have had to leave, but she was here for a long time. I want to thank, of course, my dear sister and friend, Professor Starla Lewis, and also Professor uh, Luana Richardson. I want to thank Professor Luana for being here. I was heard the other day. That, uh, matter of fact, we were at the library the other day. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Sister Charlene, Sister Mina, the brothers that visit, Brother Larry, or uh, Brother Ali, and I want to say Brother Larry. That's just like, uh, you hold on a Brother Larry. It is Larry. Brother Larry. Yeah. Brother Larry. Okay. Brother Ali. I also want to thank Tasha Williams. I saw Tasha, which is one of our candidates for mayor. Stand up for a minute, Tasha. Now, Tasha, I made her stand because Tasha has been a freedom fighter. She's on the battlefield. Now, sometimes me and her do battle. Once we don't, ever, we don't fall out. But no, that's okay because that's what it's about. She is not afraid for nobody to tell her what I can't do. So that's Tasha. <laughs> So you're looking for a soldier to stand up. That sister is that. I also want to thank our dear friend and our mayor uh, from Lemon Grove, who's been a friend of ours, Sister Raquel Vasquez, the mayor from Lemon Grove, for being here today. Uh, always been a great uh, uh, friend. Uh, I want to thank Sister Sonia Garcia uh, from the Mu Muslim... Uh, Latino Muslim Association for being here. Of course, it's an I know I saw her here someplace. Always an honor and pleasure to see her. To, uh, uh, Hajari Young, Hajari. Uh, wonderful, alhamdulillah. And all of our guests and visitors for being here with us today. I want to thank all of the brothers for being here with us today. Before you leave out, there's some books and things for sale. Now, I'm going to ask the hard part right now. Um, I know we tried to get the place for free. They didn't give it to us. We wouldn't charge. I know some of you responded, well, how much does it cost? Nothing. 
But what I want you to do, we're going to pass the charity receptacle. I don't want to come at you, Ted, give me $1,000, give me $100. I want you to give deep. And if you got a thousand, put it in there. If, if you got a hundred, put it in. But if you don't have anything, your presence today was the biggest and greatest gift that we could have had was just the presence to hear those words from my dear sister and friend, Sister Dr. Ava Mohammed. Yeah. And so when we bring her back, we look forward to that. So I'm going to call the brother and sister forward with the charity receptacles. I don't see anybody on the sister side at this point. Uh, brother Secretary. I need somebody on the sister side. I don't see anybody on the sister side. We have to move very quick. Well, brother, why don't you start? Give deep, brother and sister. You know, pull out and detain the church. You know, the jingle stuff give me a headache. So let me have the thing that just folds in Fortnite. Now, let me stop that. <laughs> let, let me stop. I should have made one of the church. Like, I got some great pastors and friends in this city. That's some good friends of mine. So, brother and sister, please dig deep. And remember, next week, Saturday, here at 2 p.m., we will have that question and answer. I saw one of my principals from school. I, I saw her and I, her name slipped my mind, but she's been a good friend. Give me the name. Stacy. Sister Stacy, who's the principal uh, at the school right here, actually. Horton. Port. Horton, Horton, Horton. And we've been over there. So a wonderful sister, a great educator. We have educators in this building that's making a difference. What we really need to do is to create our own system. But if we can't make our own, Brother Philip Liber, and good to see my good brother and friend, my dear brother, I see Brother Yusuf, good to see you. And all of you, it's like Sir Dr. David said, you start calling names, you're going to forget somebody. But I see a lot of you here. I want to thank each of you for being here today. Um, don't rush out. There are books, there's tapes that's in the back. I want to thank everybody again, and I look forward to seeing you next week, Saturday. And next week, Sunday, please be our guest. I really want to see you for that question and answer. We have to dispel a lot of the myth in who we are. Remember I said there's two streams with the nation of Islam that's really one stream. Most of you know it's from the social aspect. And, you know, I've been in this city for 21 years. And I've been on the battlefield with Tasha and many of you, Sister Starla, and many of you, I've been on the streets and in the trenches with us. That's very real. You got to, you know, we can't deny that the mosque has been there. But the side that you don't know is who we are, spiritual beings. The God fearing, Jesus loving, Muhammad understanding, Moses liberator trotting, right? Farrakhan helping. That, that's who we are. We love justice and righteousness. That's right. So if you didn't raise your hand to join today, I want you to just keep coming and be our friend. You know, they will say, if you don't have a church home, well, <laughs> but just keep coming on Sunday. We'll be here for the next month, right here. Until by grace of God, we'll be moving up the street from where we are at 6601. You know, we're building our new facility where we used to be at 6601. But we'll be down at 68th and Imperial, right next to the Boys and Girls Club. We have an 8,500 square foot facility that we have I and my brother's keeper. Um, Paving Great Future is a big community-based facility that we're building. Uh, now we're building that we're going to be occupied. We're waiting for some things to happen. So we want your support, your continued support. So if you felt you didn't give enough on your way out at the back table, you could drop something else. I'm not ashamed to ask you to get some money. I know that when you call me, I respond to you. But I have no problem with asking you to give to help us here locally. All right? With that being said, let's go ahead and close out. Uh, did I miss anything? With that being said, let's go ahead and close up. Just let's give Dr. Minister Ava Muhammad another big hand. Let, let's just say a lot. And we'll say, Takbir! 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 Allah simply means God is great. Now let's go ahead and close on prayer, all hearts and minds. You can stand and pray in the manner you choose. We pray with our feet at a 45 degree angle. Hands or palms facing up and head, head slightly bent. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors not those upon whom wrath is brought down, nor those who've gone astray. 
I mean, brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you with a safe journey home. Greet each other, talk to each other. The final call newspapers are also on the back for sale. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum. Greet each other, talk to each other.